In this introductory tutorial, I'm going to create a short video to give you an overview of the workflow and the techniques used in Adobe Premiere. We're going to produce a short 30 second introductory title sequence similar to the one playing now. We'll add a few transitions and effects such as picture in picture, some titles and some background music. I'm using Premiere CS3. However, most of the techniques I'm going to show you are basically the same for Premiere 2.0 and Premiere CS4. We're going to go through the main processes involved, starting with setting up a new project, capturing and importing the video and audio clips, the basics of the editing process, adding transitions and effects, adding some background music, and the final process of exporting our finished video back to Videotape or to Adobe Encore to produce a DVD. I'll start by selecting the new project field and selecting the appropriate presets from the Load Presets panel on the left. In this case, DV PAL, widescreen, 48K sound. Then I'll give my new project a name. The basic editing workspace has opened up and we are ready to bring our video source material into the project and start the editing process. The first thing I need to do is to capture the video clips from my video tape and import any additional video or audio material that I want to use. To keep things tidy, I'm going to create a new folder, known as a bin, in the project panel for the captured clips by selecting File, New, bin. I'll rename it as Captured Clips. Incidentally, I should mention that if your source material has been shot using a hard disk or solid state camcorder, you will probably need to transfer it directly to your PC using a USB connection. Then you can import it into the project. Check the instructions that come with your camcorder. However, as my source is DV, I'm going to capture it from the camcorder by connecting it to my PC using a Firewire iLink connection. OK, my camcorder is connected. I'll select File, Capture, and the Capture window opens up. If I select the Settings tab at the top right of the window, I can specify where my captured clips should reside on my PC. Note that Premiere performs best if you have a dedicated drive for these files. My default setup is OK, so I'm going to select the Device Controls Options field and specify the make of camcorder I'm using as there are some slight differences between brands that can occasionally cause problems during the capture process. If your camcorder hasn't come online, check that it's set to VCR playback and unplug the Firewire cable and try again. If you have an HDV camcorder, make sure its iLink setting is set up to reflect the project setting, that is DV or HDV. You will need to unplug the Firewire cable momentarily if you change the iLink setting. OK, I select the Logging tab and my camcorder is online and we're ready to capture some video clips. You can see that the buttons in the panel give me full control over the camcorder. I can play the tape, or select pause, or shuttle the tape backwards or forwards to find the beginning of a clip. When I've located a suitable in point, I can click record and start the capture process. When I've got to the end of the clip, I can select pause or stop. Give my clip a name and a description and the scene it relates to, add any notes, whatever. How much detail you enter is up to you. When I click OK to save, the clip is logged so that we can use it later. I can then shuttle on to my next clip, repeat the process, and in this way capture all of my video material. If my source is a standard DV tape, 
I can select each scene automatically by clicking the Scene Select box at the bottom of the logging pane. Premiere will now capture a new clip every time it detects a new recording on the tape. Unfortunately, scene selection is not an option if you're capturing HDV footage, so you have no choice but to select the in and out points manually. Many Premiere users simply capture the source material in chunks of 4 or 5 minutes or longer and then sort out the individual clips at the editing stage. The strategy you adopt is up to you. Incidentally, another difference between DV and HDV is that the video is not displayed in the capture window during the actual capture unless you have specialised hardware. You will need to watch it on your camera's own LCD screen or connect a monitor to the camera's video out sockets. When we have captured all of our source clips, we can close the capture window and we are ready to start editing. You can see that the clip log that's been generated by Premiere has appeared in the project panel. Before we go any further, I'm going to import a bit of music which we can use as a background to our video sequence by selecting File, Import and My Music File. If we look at the bottom of the screen, we can see that we have a window headed Timeline Sequence 1, which at the moment is empty. We're going to populate it with the clips that we want to use in our final edited video in the order that we want them to play. For the sake of this short exercise, we're only going to create one sequence, but for longer videos we would normally create multiple sequences and then string them all together in a final master sequence. There are lots of ways and techniques you can use to put your source clips into the timeline. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you two different basic approaches that you can use. In the first approach, we're going to simply copy the source clips directly into the timeline, put them into the correct order, and then trim them as required. I can simply select and drag the individual source clips from the project panel to the timeline, or I can select multiple clips by dragging the mouse over the space to the left of the source clips and then click the Automate to Sequence icon. 